Thank you, musicians, for such a beautiful performance. Also, thanks, Juvie, for that extremely underwhelming and heartfelt introduction. <laughs> a lot of you are probably wondering, why the heck are Mr. Tom, Danielle, and Mia giving a chapel talk tonight? What do those three people have to do with the library? And why are they going to offer us unsolicited lessons from said library? We kind of are, too. It all started when I was paired with Mr. Tom for library duty this year. I was really hoping for really any other teacher, but I got stuck with him. So you know what, I figured I'd try and make it work. While the first couple of nights of duty weren't so bad, I felt like I needed backup, and so I started bringing Danielle to bring me company. When Mia asked me, I was like, uh, I don't know, the library? What could I possibly get out of going to the library? And then she threatened me, so I ended up going, and I'm happy I did. What we're about to share with you are lessons learned during this year, Mr. Tom and Mia's Tuesday night duties in the library. Some of these lessons we all learned. Some of these are lessons that you all learned. And a few are lessons that only I learned. The format is going to be a bit different tonight. It won't be so... It won't be a long narrative. The three of us are simply going to bounce between lessons. There will be many lessons, and each lesson is about one line long. So even if a lesson moves you to tears, laughter, or applause, hold it, or you might miss the next equally goaty lesson. And then after those rapid-fire lessons, me and Danielle will offer us four-year lessons from the Library of Life. And now, lessons from the library. Arrive early, but not too early, because then you're stuck talking to a faculty member. Three strike rules really do work. Thanks, baseball. Don't eat any food that comes from a backpack that comes from Bert. <laughs> <laughs> catching people doing the right thing is often way more powerful than catching them doing the wrong thing. Riddles can be hard. Delegation is an important aspect of leadership. As is trust. Looking like doing work is sometimes as important as actually doing work. Some people can't handle the library. Sometimes people just need to have their volume checked. Trust Mia, always. Trust Mia, always. Trust me, always. Find fun ways to hold people accountable. For instance, when Mia would say no to someone, she'd say, Uh-uh. <laughs> Don't joke with Mr. Smith, or he'll sign you up for a chapel talk. With or without COVID, some rooms should have a people limit. The library, 20 max. Don't eat any food that comes from an air fryer from Burton. <laughs> the rule of threes. Have three people ready to manage a space. Have three strikes. Have three ways to redirect someone. Have three ways to ask for something. Inevitably, you'll need all three. For instance, the rule of threes. If Mr. Tom or I were not locked in, Danielle would absolutely lose it when folks weren't doing what they're supposed to do. Setting a secondary goal of having fun is always a good idea. It can help you get through some pretty crappy jobs. It all comes back around. Six formers will complain about fourth formers in the library, just like six formers complained about us when we were fourth formers. When leaving the library, or really any room or building, do not walk through the door that says, do not enter, alarm will sound. While this seems self-explanatory, based on our experience, it is not. Slay can be an adjective, verb, <laughs> adverb, or noun. Snacks make everything better. Unless they come from Burton. Really try not to eat any food that comes from Burton. <laughs> <laughs> and now, me and Danielle are going to share some larger lessons from the library over their four years. When you apply to Millbrook and go on your tour, everyone says the classic line here at Millbrook, known and needed. When I heard this, I thought, wow, that is so nice. And while it may seem cliche, it is really like that. Throughout my four years, I've come to realize that this statement, everyone is known and needed, is true. When coming to Millbrook, I did not want to be involved in anything having to do with the arts. Little did I know, I would end up loving photography, and I created connections with other students and teachers in photography. It became one of the places I was known and needed. When I applied for dorm leader going to my fifth form year, I was not accepted. While this was disappointing, many teachers and students uplifted and supported me. Whatever I was struggling with, whether it be at school or having to do with home, there were always many teachers that I could turn to. 
I also learned, leaned on my support to grow. I wanted to know what I could do to improve as a student, a person, and a member of the Millbrook community. So I encourage you all to take advantage of the teacher-student relationships that are given to you. Apply for student leadership positions, and if you don't get it, try again. So you can take this statement at face value. Every student and faculty and staff member on campus is known and needed in one way or another, or you can look deeper. Everybody on campus is here for you to support you and have your back. If you buy into this culture and involve yourself in the community, you, are, you will find a more fulfilling four years at Millbrook, and you too will be known and needed in a deeper way. Coming to Millbrook my freshman year not knowing anybody, I was really worried about making friends and being in a new environment away from home. But I kept my head up and tried making friends with everyone, and at the beginning of the year, I made really good friends with my roommates and the girls from volleyball. But towards the end of the fall, I found myself spending a lot of time with only one of my friends. We would always be doing everything together, but I wanted to change that. So going into the spring, I branched out and started hanging out with more people. And when it came time to apply for leadership positions, I decided that I didn't want to because I was so comfortable with spending most of my time with friends. Then sophomore year, COVID hit, and we all had to stay home and go online. We were hoping for we were hoping to come back for a normal junior year, but it wasn't looking too good. Regardless, time came to apply for leadership positions again, and I really wasn't sure if I should apply for anything. But my brother kind of called me out and said, don't be lazy, go back next year and get involved in something or you're not gonna get into college. Look at me, I've done X, Y, and Z. And as much as I hated my brother's bragging, I thought about how he just went through the college process and realized he probably knew more than I did. So I thought, okay, why not apply to be a PC, which was a peer supporter and humdub counselor in one at the time. And I ended up not getting PC, but that didn't stop me from trying to get involved. So junior year, while it was really hard to plan things with COVID, I was still able to help with some of the all school events. A lot of planning and communicating was through emails and announcements at assemblies, which I had fun doing. This was kind of the kickstart to me wanting to get even more involved. Then came time to apply for leadership positions again, and I realized that I didn't need to apply just for peer supporter, hum dev facilitator, or a dorm leader to be considered involved. So now I'm involved in a variety of things like Friday Council, Studers, Farm Leader, different kinds of sports, clubs, and more. So my advice for you all is to try to get involved in as many clubs, leadership, sports, and activities as early as you can before the day comes when you're sitting up on the balcony reminiscing about all the fun times you've had here wishing for more. Me and Danielle don't know that I'm about to do this. I'm surprising them. I have one question for each of you. <laughs> and this is not scripted. Nine days left. What's the one thing you want to do one more time, or maybe for the first time, before you leave Milburn? <laughs> You're each going to answer, so don't look at each other. Okay. Um. <laughs> I would say I want to go marshmucking with my friends one last time. That's a good one. I was going to say that. Um, I didn't do the marshmucking my freshman year. I got to do the canopy walk, so probably that again with everyone. Marshmucking. Canopy, canopy walk. walk. Oh, canopy walk. <laughs> yeah. Bad <list. laughs> It's okay. I would urge six formers, think about that question. What's one more thing you want to do for the first time or once more, one more time before you leave here? A huge thanks to me and Danielle.